A boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat! Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Live, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds, and we have a super fun one this week. So in Murders of Karlov Manor, Watsy brought back face-down creatures, these mysterious creatures. The problem is, the creatures just aren't mysterious enough. They're mostly like face-down tutus that flip up into two ones or whatever. It's just not really all that surprising. So today we're looking to fix that with Vanifar Surprise, a deck that's trying to turn our little face-down tutus into some of the scariest cards in all of Standard as early as turn four. So let's talk about this deck, what it's trying to do, jump into some games, see if we can pull off the surprise. So step one of this deck, is cloaking. So we have three different cards that can cloak cards either from the top of our library, like Hide in Plain Sight or Cryptic Coat, or from our hand, like our namesake Vanifar and Valved Enigma. So the goal of our deck is to use our cloak cards to hopefully get some of the biggest, baddest cards in standard face down is a 2 2. So we have one with the multiverse, Portal to Phyrexia, Titan Industry, Cityscape Lever, Itali, Atroxa, just the biggest, scariest cards in the format. And the idea of this deck is we can use our cloaking cards. Uh, Vanifar, Hide in Plain Sight, Cryptic Coat, to get these cards into play face down, and then the surprise happens. We have a bunch of cards that can flip those face down tutus into their front side. So like Unyielding Gatekeeper, actually one of our best cards, because we can like cloak it with Vanifar or Hide in Plain Sight, and then flip it up for two mana to blink one of our things, touch the Spirit Realm, removal that can blink one of our things, Nahiri's Resolve, especially sweet with Hide in Plain Sight, because it can flip up all of our face down surprises at once, and then Werefox Bodyguard, kind of removal, but we can also use it to exile one of our surprises and then sack it to get it into play. So that's the goal of the deck. Step one, cloak some of these big things with Vanifar High and Plains like Cryptic Coat, and then use our blink effects to flip them face up and hopefully use them to win the game. Otherwise, get lost for removal, mana base, ton of surveillance. Surveillance are really good in this deck. I mean, they're good in general, but they're especially good in this deck because two of our big cloak cards, Hide in Plain Sight and Cryptic Coat, cloak off the top of our library. So we can use the surveillance to kind of control the top of our deck, or at least know what's on the top of our deck, to try to put a surprise there, and then use Cryptic Code or whatever to get on the battlefield. Sideboard, a bunch of removal and sweepers, some counters, some life gain, some graveyard hate, and that is Vanifar Surprise for Standard. That's our deck for today, so let's jump into some games and see if we can turn a very harmless face down 2-2 into an Atroxa, an Atali, a Portal to Phyrexia or something. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. It, I'll be back a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the tokens signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtggoldfishmerch.com. Against the odds time, we are trying to <laughs> do some Vanifar surprising in standard, and... This hand looks good, minus the fact we only have two lands, although we do have a surveil land, which, all right, now now this hand's fine. I mean, we have the Vanifar. We have three blink effects for our surprises, and we have a hide in plain sight, so, ugh, opponent. Well, that's another land. I mean, so we get to face down a, a gatekeeper, and then the next turn, probably hide in plain sight. We have a very mysterious creature for you, <laughs> resolves. Fairy Mastermind, eh, that's kind of fine. We don't really draw extra cards in this deck. Just a 2-1, Oh, uh, Rafine. All right, that's interesting. Oh, now what do we do? We can just answer the Rafine by flipping up the Gatekeeper and paying the ward, but I really wanna, well, let's see what we draw. If we draw something big. <laughs> All right, that's a portal. That's a Vanifar. Uh, Surprise! <laughs> let's uh, let's just put a harmless little 2-2 into play. If our opponent has removal, let's see if they guess correctly. <laughs> it could be anything, opponent. <laughs> opponent gonna get in. Well, this worked out absolutely perfectly, because now we can take the Rafine hit. They do get to filter a bunch, which is annoying. But uh, then we can just flip up this portal and blow them out. Opponent loots away some lands. Hits us for four. We wouldn't mind drawing even another land. Well, I mean, I think we just have to, we just have to portal. Let's keep on cloaking. 
One of the cool synergies here is we can just keep cloaking these gatekeepers. So now we actually have two that are gonna be face down. Surprise. <laughs> they did pass with four mana up. I'm about to get settler wreckage. It could be a wandering emperor. A Ganjo. That's fine. Vanifar's done its job. <laughs> we don't really need Vanifar to continue living. We just need it to put our surprise into play. Opponent down to 16. And I think we just pass. Theoretically possible, they shield rid main phase to get the looting off Rafine. All right, looks like they're just going to attack. I mean, we are going to flip up now and uh, get rid of the Rafine. So, uh, Gatekeeper. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, surprise. <laughs> Guess what opponent? <laughs> it's not a 2-2, it's a portal to Phyrexia. <laughs> Whoa, no, come on. I mean, we still have a portal to Phyrexia. We can get rid of the Fairy Mastermind to m minimize the Rafine, but that is a blowout. Oh. Well, at least it wasn't Tishana's Tidebinder, I guess. Ah, do we misplay there? I think it was still correct to wait we could have done it during our turn to just get the portal and get rid of the rafine and i guess the mastermind but if their four drop was shielder instead of urtai it would have been so better this way yeah all right well we get to reanimate yeah let's just get vanifar again keep on vanifar in um well play the land we probably do need to answer this rafine yeah let's let's get rid of the rafine and we can keep cloaking these gatekeepers gatekeeper i feel like is kind of a, a decent card i don't know where does the carla manor ended up not being that strong of a set but i still think that gatekeeper is like it's not bad opponent does some blocking interesting i mean blocking is good for us because that puts <laughs> creatures in the graveyard for our portal so unless our opponent's gonna kill the portal all right gix sure and deep cavern bat well surprise <laughs> <laughs> it's a couple of hiding plane sites. If we draw another land, we could spin for another surprise here, actually. We could surprise and uh, off hiding plane site and then flip up the gatekeeper to blink it. Passes. Well, hmm. Yeah. We probably gotta just kill. Man, yeah, let's get rid of the gigs. The bat doesn't really matter here. Yeah, hide in plane sight. Uh, well, no good surprises. We can get a backup Vanifar, which isn't the worst, but nothing, nothing bomby. Uh, not that we really even need it here, I don't think. Like, we got the portal going. Like, that's the takeaway here. Start putting counters on things, get an edge, yeah. I mean, that's the nice thing about this deck is hopefully, in theory, we only need one surprise to pretty much put away in the game. Now I kind of want a stone brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted to stone braining after last week's deck. Eklazots. Uh, sure. If one gets and hits us, gains a life. Uh, well, let's, I guess, just do some gigs in. And we can flip up a gatekeeper to get rid of the Eklazots. And just grow the team, I guess. Yeah, this, this is just over, right? I think. Counters on everything. Go to combat. Swing. And then flip. And then... Antlazot's gonna become a <laughs> detective. <laughs> detective Antlazot's dead, dead, dead. But I'm gonna block the Urtai and die. Well, <laughs> it turns out randomly getting a super fast portal to Phyrexia, pretty good way. Even if it gets countered by Urtai, still a pretty good way of winning a game of magic. Who oh, Esper? Best I can standard Esper. What do we want against Esper? Destroy evils, pretty good. That kills Shieldred, Preachers, Rafines. Let's trim the cityscape leveler. What else can we cut? Maybe a cryptic coat. It's kind of weird because we're like a combo deck, right? So it's not like we can just take out all the big stuff or we don't have surprises. We can't take out all the blink stuff or else we'll never get our surprises. We can't take out the cloak stuff because then we can't get our surprises on the battlefield. So it's kind of like a, a combo deck where it's actually hard to sideboard too many cards without, uh, without losing our primary game plan, but... All right, on to game number two versus Esper. On the draw this time, which, eh, worse than being on the play. A bit, a smidge. Actually kind of a lot when you think about it, but, well, that is a zero lander, not keep. <laughs> well, okay. Unyielding gatekeeper, hide in plain sight, kind of a combo. Opponent, untap land. Well, we will start with a surveil land. And I don't think we need a fast land. 
Well, it's probably going to come down to whether we can resolve Hide in Plain Sight and what we hit with Hide in Plain Sight. We would really... Ooh, another Blink Effect. If we can hit something big, we can do the thing and maybe win. So it's going to be... Oh, yeah, going to be a big Hide in Plain Sight. Let's see what our phone has. Land and... Gix. Uh, all right. Well, even more Touch the Spear Realms. Well, uh, I guess we do a little touching of the Gix. Gross. Gix down. Oh, potent. Deep Cavern Bat. Aww. They're going to take our Hide and Plane sign, aren't they? They can't really take removal because we have so many redundant removal spells. So we will get the Hide and Plane like back eventually, but we kind of wanted to do it now, not in the future. Mm, yep, takes the Hide and Plane sight. Ooh, gets back the Gix. That's awkward. Uh, well, touch the Spirit Realm. Get rid of the Gix again. It would be nice to get rid of the bat and get back to hide in plain sight, but we we can't let Gig start drawing cards. Ravine. I mean, next turn we can use a gatekeeper as removal, assuming it resolves. Phone ain't gonna do a little conniving. Rafine's one of those cards that I will be glad when it rotates. <laughs> I've just seen Rafine way too many times the last two and a ooh, to populate. What are the odds our opponent has a counter though? I think we're just gonna let's test the waters with a mysterious creature. It doesn't really feel like our opponent has a counter. Found it. Land. Urtai. Well, this works out kind of fine. So they go after our face down creature. They gotta pay the ward. So that's our whole turn. And now we can flip it up and nuke the bat. The question's gonna be do we still have to just wrath? Probably. Alright. Destroy evil is not a bad draw. Opponent. Hits us. Does a little conniving. I mean, we're also still at 18 ish. Literally 18. Ooh, Vanifar. Yeah, let's just reset the board. I feel like we're in a pretty good spot, right? We got four cards. Our opponent's got three. The board is swept. We got removal. We got Vanifar. We got hide and play inside. Okay, there's a Gix. And, ooh. Wow, those are two good cards. We draw in a Troxa. Oh, we need like two turns to get things set up. Could use another land, really. So we can hide in plain sight. We can Vanifar, put a Troxa into play face down. We could Vanifar, put Gatekeeper into play face down. I don't think we can afford to let our opponent hit with both creatures. Like, that's just too much card draw. I think we have to kill the Preacher. Because they trigger Gix and they trigger Preacher. They draw three? That would be really bad. Yeah, I think we just have to do it this way, unfortunately. This is, like, not as helpful towards getting a surprise, but hopefully helpful in keeping us alive. Well, all right, there goes our gatekeeper. At least our opponent had to pay three mana to cut down. Draws a card. Well, so much for our opponent almost being out of cards. I mean, they kind of still are, but the Gix is helping them. There's a land, but it's a little tapped. Well, we really need this to resolve. Hide in plain sight. Oh, all right, Cryptic Coat, and here is Resolve. The only non-land cards in the pile. Well, no surprises really. Nahiri's Resolve, I guess, is surprising. Because <laughs> no one expects you to play Nahiri's Resolve, but it's not going to just win us the game. And now we're out of blink effect, so putting a Trox into play is not that good. Opponent, anoint with affliction and pays the ward. Boy, they're just snowballing this Gix into removal. <laughs> removal into removal. Yeah, I don't think we block it. Down to 12, opponent draws. Opponent land. Ah, oh, she oldred. Portal to Phyrexia. Oh, so close, so close. If only we had a blink effect, we'd be like all set. Well, put the portal in the price. So we have a surprise. We have went through a lot of blink though, and we don't have a way to flip up either of our our face down creatures. No, you don't. <sighs> Oh, all right. Opponent is really chained together. There's some removal here. Opponent gets in. I think we have to double block Gix. See if our opponent chooses wisely with the surprise. Uh, okay. They killed the one that we are okay with dying. They killed the Nahiri's result, but we still have the portal. So we're drawn life to a blink effect, but we have like one turn. Uh, hedge maze. That's not a blink effect. Destroy evil can technically kill Shieldred, so it does mean we definitely have to chump block uh, with our portal, which, oh, we had plans. We had plans for this opponent. Yeah, I mean, we have to block or we're literally dead right now. In theory, 
I mean, this plaza is also an issue, right? We got to hope our opponent just does not realize how their deck works. Uh, one time. <laughs> one time opponent. Oh, all right. <laughs> they, they have Urtai. And that, uh, that'll that do it. That actually literally does it, right? Because we have to draw. Well, okay. Oh, so close. I really wanted one of those surprises. We were really close. Game one went really well. Game two, not as good. I thought we were ahead that game too. I was feeling like we were in pretty good shape. Our opponent definitely hit some uh, some removal, which was helpful. We just couldn't, couldn't get it set up. We were close. We were like one card away multiple times from like getting the portal or getting whatever. And Atroxa just barely, barely couldn't pull it off. Ew, we're gonna keep it. Like Cryptic Coat's good. Hide and Plain Sight's good. This hand could really use a Vanifar. We have two cards in our hand that we don't really want to cast. We kind of want to surprise them. Probably got to keep a get lost, unfortunately. A little nervous about not hitting lands, but removal is also kind of important. This hand has zero removal. All right, opponent. What do you got on to? Nothing. Well, at least we hit a land. Tap land or cryptic co? I think we just tap land. Surveil. Yeah, that's another removal spell. I think Gatekeeper's worth it. Opponent. Well, now we kind of want our opponent to play, well, all right, something. Hmm, this is awkward. Yeah, I mean, I think we got to fire it off. Well, all right, no fear, no counter. Grab the non-land, so we get a Vanifar and a Werefox bodyguard. Getting Vanifar face down is kind of cute, because we can we can pay to flip it up, which actually we will do next turn if we get the chance. Oh no, they guess they guessed correctly. <laughs> All right, out of those two options, <laughs> we would have much rather kept the Vanifar than the Werefox bodyguard, but. All right, well, Cryptic Coat. Come on, find us a supply. Well, that's not the surprise we were looking for. Ah, oh, they guessed Vanifar. Yeah, killing the Werefox would have been fine. Then we could flip the Vanifar, get the portal into play. I mean, that's part of the fun of this deck, right? Is we get all these face down creatures <laughs> and we see if our opponent can correctly guess which one to kill. I don't think there's much of a tell to it. Sometimes you can tell like if we cast one versus cloaking one or whatever, but all right, opponent's gonna go for the cryptic coat wad. Opponent is just really not concerned about this werefox. <laughs> they're just, they're not worried about it. Hilariously though, our opponent is having to, oh my God, that's fan of fire. Uh, well, that's good. That is very good. Uh, well, opponent, we have a surprise for you. <laughs> it is called, do we have a portal or maybe we put the gatekeeper into play? I think we actually, as weird as it sounds, I think we gatekeeper this turn. And then next turn, Portal flip it up right away. Opponent. Opponent's gotta be about out of removal. They've cast, they've got so many removal spells. Probably better known as two, but it feels like so many removal spells. It is funny the taxing of the ward really does. Wow, okay. So opponent has Bitter Triumph. They go for the Gatekeeper. Oh, that's, that is fine though. That should probably do it well. Uh, surprise. <laughs> Portal to Phyrexia. Hits you a little bit. Past the, well, I guess we can Cryptic Goat too, actually. Cryptic Goat. I don't think we are going to hit something better than the Portal. Oh, wow. That is a Gatekeeper. Okay. <laughs> Not better than a Portal, but very good with the Face Down Portal. All right, opponent. Would you like to kill a Face Down creature? <laughs> this time we were prepared for it. And we have the surprise ready. Our opponent's also down to eight. We've just sort of like, they've had to spend their entire turn to cast the, ooh, Path Apparel, cleaved. Well, okay, surprise, <laughs> Gatekeeper. <laughs> Flip up that portal. So we lose all of our stuff, but we get a portal to start rebuilding. And uh, yeah, let's get back a Vanifar. <laughs> do it again, do it again. And now we get to play a land. We can cloak the surprise, Titan Industry, and go. So now if our opponent tries to kill the Titan, we can flip it up. Lauren of the Third Path. Well, okay, now we might have to save. Yeah, I think we save it. We might be able to win immediately by going after the, flipping the Titan here, but I don't think we need to do that. So let's just blink out, blink out the portal. We could also just draw land and <laughs> naturally flip up the Titan. Well, get back the portal. And I think we're about to take down Esper with our surprises. <laughs> Portal to Frexia's surprise. Gotta sag the Lauren. 
So we don't literally have lethal yet. We can hit for six and our opponent's at eight. Well, what do we get back? Lauren? No. A gatekeeper. We could get back the Weir Fox to exile the Titan and blink it, but I don't think we need to do that. We're just in such a good spot here. Combat. Or Cryptic Coat first, I guess. We're probably going to end up putting counters on stuff this turn, so we might as well get all the colorless creatures out. Obscura Interceptor. Sure. Gonna bounce the coat. Do a little conniving. Haven't seen an Interceptor in a minute. I thought that card was gonna be good. Did not end up being that good. It saw a little bit of play at one point, but not. it never really took off. It seems decent though, it even has lifelink. I guess we just code again. Code again, a code again, and put counters on the dorks, and it's a hide in plain sight. Our opponent needs, I guess, another wrath, and even if they wrath, we got the portal going. So yeah, portal's just, <laughs> if portal sits out, it is hard to beat. It, it, wow, opponent just passes. Well, let's snag a, I guess we can get the wear fox. Let's just make sure we can close out this game. All right, opponent's going to counter it, sure. But we get to draw a card. Ooh, Unyielding Gatekeep. Ooh, Nahiri's Resolve. Good God. Well, let's let's uh, put a counter on our dorks and attack you. <laughs> Cryptico also gives Unblockable. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the surprise that time is Cryptico for lethal, but uh, that's kind of what we're trying to do. <laughs> surprise, Esper, surprise. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> sweet, sweet. We are doing some Vanifar surprising and eh. all right, we got the hide in plain sight. That's that's good. That's good. That could find us something. We still need a way to access the surprise once we get to it, but we also have all of our colors of mana pretty much, which is good. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Boros. Boros. Well, Cryptic Coat's not the worst. So next turn, we're going to play Cryptic Coat. Then the next turn, we're going to hide in plain sight. Yeah, let's just mill it. We really just want to find a way to turn up our surprise, assuming we hit something. Oh, but it planes. So I imagine this is Boros Agro most... Wow, passing? Okay. Well, they could have... They could have the Flash uh, Resolute Reinforcements. Let's Cryptic Coat. There's the reinforcements. All right, let's hide away something good. What is our, oh my God, okay, Cityscape Leveler. I mean, that is a surprise. <laughs> Warden of the Inner Sky. Are we tapping to do a little scrying? Oh, if we can only flip this up. Dream Root Cascade. Well, we will play a farmland, hide in plain sight. Take a Vanifar. I mean, I guess touch the Spirit Realm. It could be relevant that we flip it up and then it could be relevant that we flip it up and exile something. Oh, we really just need any of our blink effects. Any blink effect. We could flip up. Well, here comes the recruiter. Double block the warden. Our opponent kills the touch of spirit realms. So we draw another land. Well, okay. So I think what we do then, I think we just flip up Vanifar and start cloaking lands for now. Should we be a, are we the aggro? We can't be the aggro in this matchup. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way that we're the aggro against Boros here, I don't think. Cloaking the land's kind of annoying because we could eventually hard cast this one with the multiverse, but opponent. War leader's call to grow the dorks. All right, Knight Errant of Eos taps it all, pings us. Yep. Well, we draw nothing. Let's play Meticulous Archive. Definitely milling Razor Verge Thicket. We just haven't drawn any way to flip up our stuff. One, two, oh, awkward, so many lands. All right, let's just cloak a one with the multiverse. I mean, we're gonna have to get lost something. Like, probably the Helix, I guess. Opponent, land on human. Okay get pinged resolute reinforcements well all right let's get lost dude still not in a very good spot here but i better not have a second recruiter or war leader's call that would be very all right well sometimes all the recruiters are on the top of the deck goes attacking so if we block here are we just literally dead i think we're just literally dead plus we lose all of our stuff and our opponent gets to see what we're doing well let's see what it looks like but we're probably just conceding so if we block there we block there 
We block there. But then we lose everything but Vanifar. Down to three. Draw nothing. Well, all right, cycle. Touch the spirit realm. Finally found it, but it's too late to matter. <laughs> oh! Magic gods. All right, we'll cloak the land. Oh, brutal. <laughs> if we had found this earlier, we could have done our thing. We just did not find it in time. Opponent. Maps. It's a Voldir and Epic here. Well, that's also, yeah, that means we're actually literally dead. We go to one, but then we can't stop the Epic here. Now we get to bring in some uh, sideboard cards, which is nice. Temporary Lockdown, very good against this deck. Depopulate, very good against this deck. Could bring in the Sunset Revelry if we can find room. We'll go down the Cityscape level, or we'll go down one Nahiri's Resolve, and maybe one Cryptic Co. I mean, that is the thing, right? We need, we need two things with this deck. We need to cloak things, and then we need to be able to turn those things into their front side, mostly by blinking those things. That game, the cloaking went fine. We did a good job of cloaking. The problem we ran into is we just did not draw any of the, the flip them up cards. <laughs> So we drew all one half of our deck. Our opponent also drew double Imidane's Recruiter and War Leader's Call. So they had a lot of their payoffs in the top of their deck that game, which didn't make things easier. Well, okay. This game we have all of our blink, but no cloaking. I mean, I guess we do have a lot of removal technically, although no sweepers. Not the biggest fan of just trying to targeted removal through Boros. Uh, well, Meticulous Archive. Yeah, I mean, we don't really need more blink effects. Voldir and Epica. Sure. Well, there's an Itali. If we can find a way to cloak Itali, that would be sweet. Because we do have blink effects for days. Yeah, I think we go bottom. So we need to find Vanifar mostly. Vanifar would be our best hit here. Because then we Vanifar cloak the Itali, flip it up, do the thing. Itali, Itali surprise. Bone tap land and sure. And passes all right more blinking well let's just play a gatekeeper one of the best cards in this deck because we can cloak it and still flip it face up wow discards a land draws a card also the ward on this is relevant like it is not the easiest for our opponent to kill i guess it's theoretically possible we could cast an itali our mana base is not really built to try to <laughs> to cast it but it could happen opponent furnace punisher i mean we can't answer that although we are going to take two Hedge Maze. Well, we will just touch the Spirit Realm. Get rid of the Furnace Punisher. Play the Hedge Maze. Mill the Sparrow's Headquarters. All right, deck. All right, deck. At this point, we'll take pretty much any cloaking. Vanifar is still the best, but a Cryptic Coat would be okay. Just anything to cloak would be very helpful. We still have two Blink Effects. Opponent, War Leader's Call. Probably gonna take the Epicure Beats and then blow up the War Leader's Call. Opponent hits us for one. No blocks, down to 13. Werefox Bodyguard isn't the worst. Let's play the land. Yeah, I think we just blow up the War Leader's Call. Opponent gets some maps. Touch the Spirit Realm to get rid of the Warden of the Inner Sky. Pass the turn. Opponent's down to two cards in hand, two cards. We still have a removal spell left over, which is nice. Could still use some cloaking, oh god. Opponent. Well, one of those cards is a Gleeful Demolition, unfortunately. And also an Imodane's Recruiter. Man, opponent's always got it. Always got it. Well, we're gonna block and take eight, but we draw a jet mirrors garden odds of being dead pretty high here especially if our opponent has even more payoffs we can flash in the wear fox but not convinced that's gonna be enough here uh but in this game we just drew zero zero cloaking no way to cloak opponent okay draws a land plays the land attacks well we will wear fox bodyguard snipe a token and Block an Epicure. Well, all right. <laughs> Spin it to win it. Spin it to win it. <laughs> not our plan, but we will cast an Itali. We are not above casting an Itali here. Ooh. All right, one with the Multiverse and a Gleeful Demolition that we can't even cast and a land on top. We're probably still dead, but we did cast something. <laughs> Of relevance this is not how we want to be doing it that is not the plan of this deck like at all but 
opponent. Lithomantic Barrage and dead to the bivouac. Are you gonna fire it up? Yep. All right. Well, whew. Well, I mean, I think we keep this. We don't have any cloaking at the moment, which is awkward, but we have double blink effects, technically some removal. And if we find a Vonavar, we can get down the one with the multiverse and who knows what'll happen. Opponent. Playing some artifacts, eh? Well, that is a Vanifar. Okay, okay. I like where this is heading, maybe. If we're alive, we'll see how aggro our opponent is. Get Lost is not the worst. Well, let's play a tap land. Get Lost I actually kind of like. Opponent going to deduce. We'll see what our opponent plays here. We can potentially kill something, or we can get this face down. Another case of the Filched Falcon. Opponent gonna solve some cases. Well, we will play the land and play a very mysterious <laughs> unyielding gatekeeper. Oh no, if they miss their land drops, they might just scoop. Come on, hit your land, hit your land. Please, please hit your land. Ah, okay, opponent hits their land, Trank will go. Well, uh, we are going to play a Vanifar. And uh, I think we're just gonna do a little cloaking of this one with the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Opponent hitting their lands. Opponent passes the turn. Well, we will play Rafine's Tower. Go to combat. Oh, this is going to be brutal, isn't it? We are going to cloak. Our opponent's going to attempt to make a case. Okay, sure. Well, in that case, we're going to hit you a little. And then we're going to, uh, surprise, it's a gatekeeper. Surprise, it's a one with the multiverse. Surprise, it's a Nahiri's Resolve. Surprise, we're gonna blink a portal to Fraxia. <laughs> and uh, it's, your, it's your go, Vote, it's your go. I mean, Vanifar died, but uh, <laughs> doesn't really matter because we got the surprises down first. So now we get a one with the multiverse and a portal to Phyrexia's coming. Opponent going to kill the one with the multiverse. Sure, going to pass. Well, we will return our portal to Phyrexia. And let's just crack a map. Uh, we'd like to hide in plain sight, but I feel like it's gonna get countered. We'd rather have our opponent like kill this. If you wanna kill the elephant, that's okay. Well, commence uh, commercial district. Um, I don't even think we want the gatekeeper really. Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep that. And now we'll hide in plain sight. A tally and gatekeeper. <laughs> and a uh, blink and, uh, don't blink the gatekeeper, but blink the tally. Surprise. <laughs> it's a dinosaur, a very mysterious dinosaur. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what, friend? Uh, we will reanimate Unyielding Gatekeeper. We will get a very surprising Itali. <laughs> oh, hide in plain sight. <laughs> uh, so, opponent, case of the Filched Falcon A. We'll bring in the Tranquil Frill back. I guess temporary lockdown, probably worth it. We'll go down one Cityscape Leveler, Cryptic Coat, and one Nahiri's Resolve. Oh, the Farewell, yeah, let's just try it like that. That's fine. Let's see how it goes. That went That went pretty well. That went surprisingly well. People already have the fear of morphs, and in standard, morphs like kinda, yeah, they're not very good, right? Like the face down creatures, most of them are not that scary. Our deck actually makes them scary though. The cloak mechanic can put some pretty scary things face down. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep this. This hand is good at staying alive. We got the temporary lockdown, we got the get lost, touch the spirit realm. I mean, in theory, hide in plain sight, touch the spirit realm, surprise. It's also kind of the story of the vault, right? From Outlaws of Thunder Junction. This isn't an Outlaws of Thunder Junction deck, that'll be next week, but <laughs> it's kind of the story. You're like, hey, we're gonna like, wow, are they missing their land wraps opponent? Opponent. <laughs> you Oh, just hit a land, hit a land. Oh, opponent. All right, Lush Portico, uh, Cryptic Coat to the Graveyard. I guess we should have played the fast land. Land, oh, opponent, please hit a land. Well, oh, they're just gonna scoop. All right, hide in plain sight. Well, it's not as much fun to surprise people when they, <laughs> when they aren't hitting their land drops. Then it just feels kind of mean. Hit a land, oh, opponent, please. Oh, Ponerino, well, okay, smack ya. <laughs> 
Play the land, pass the turn. We are going to get our one with the multiverse. Hey, opponent, land number two, but I think it might be a little too late. Uh, su surprise? It's a one with the multiverse? Not just a useless 2-2? <laughs> uh, well, I feel a little bad that our opponent's missing these land drops, but uh, what can you do? They could blow it up. That's possible. We saw it. We saw get lost, so they could just get lost it. Blow it up, opponent. Blow it up. It's okay. All right, opponent blows it up. Sure. Well, now we get to Meticulous Archive, Surveil. Can we find a surprise? Well, that's not really good enough. All right, Cryptico, come on, come on. Give us a surprise, give us a surprise. I guess that's kind of surprising. <laughs> I don't know how a Cryptico ends up cloaking a Cryptico, but now opponent's hitting their lands now. So the game, the game is continuing. Uh, commercial District, Deserted Beach, going to the graveyard takes their beats you can see the ward being kind of annoying here you know what let's just pass and leave our stuff up i think that's fine we can pick up the cryptic coat during our opponent's turn we can leave up removal well pick up the coat pick up the coat <laughs> yeah we're not gonna get time bound here opponent no 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 counters the cryptic coat that's no longer on the battlefield portal we would have rather had you in our deck all right let's let's do a little mapping see if we can figure out what's on the top of our deck for this coat uh, that's a land. We'll play the Portico. Surveil. Razor Ridge Thicket to the bottom. Uh, okay. Map. Something big on top, please. Wear Fox Bodyguard. <laughs> Alright, opponent. Yeah, opponent. Game one, we got him with a surprise. This game, our opponent just kinda, kinda missed a few too many land drops. We are Vanna Far Surprising in standard, and it sounds fine. I mean, we got some removal. Gotta hide in plain sight. Mistress Research Desk, eh? Mm. Nahiri's Resolve is sweet. The problem with Nahiri is, yeah, we better keep a sage you. The problem with Nahiri's Resolve is it can be hard to get on the battlefield without dying. Sir Jin oh my god, is this our budget deck? This looks like our budget deck. Are we getting, are we getting Sir Gingered? Well, we're gonna kill the Sir Ginger. All right, all right. I mean, it might be upgraded. I don't remember how good our mana beast was in this deck, but is it Sir Ginger? Was a budget magic not that long ago. Opponent, Subterranean Schooner, land, and Case of the Filch Falcon, all right. <laughs> now that's a magic card. Hmm. Well, I guess it's tap land go time. I mean, we do kind of have the combo, right, of hide in plain sight and in Nahiri's Resolve. We'll see how far behind we are. Well, they're an Epicure. Ouch. Down to 19. I mean, that's the that's the only problem. If we're too far behind, it might be tough to get down the Nahiri's Resolve. Also, well, let's try to kill this. Our opponent could definitely have counters. Thinking. Thinking. Disruption Protocol. Yeah. Well, opponent gets in, finds more schooners. Mills more schooners. Well, let's hide in plain sight. We really could use a surprise or two. Magic gods. Well, that's a portal. Okay. And a cryptico. Well, that's fine. That's fine. We found a surprise. Oh, do we have to block and hope that they kill the wrong one? Now, let's see what our opponent does here. Gleaming Gear Drake. I mean, we can portal to Fraxia in two turns. Is that fast enough? They also have this case of the Filch Falcon, which is kind of an issue. Because that's going to not die. Also, the ship. Hmm. Yeah, our opponent's actually, like, kind of resilient to a portal here. Oh, and a Sir Ginger. All right. Well, opponent with the beatdowns and grows the Drake. We take four down to 12. Atroxa. Oh, it would have been nice if we had hit that one card. One card higher up in our library so it could be face down. What are our options here? We could try to besage you something, but I don't feel like that's going to be good enough. I think we just have to play them here as yourself. Might as well smack you for three because we're going to blink it. Blink out the portal. And uh, the unfortunate part about this as well is our opponent's going to see it coming. <laughs> that portal is now face up in exile. So our opponent, if they're paying any amount of attention to this game, is going to know if they run out the Sir Ginger, it's going to die. So they have the case that can make a four for next turn. I kind of feel like even with this portal, if we don't top deck, we're probably dead. Found it. Cracks. Grows the Drake. And Spyglass Siren. Are we milling? Or are we keeping? Opponent mills it. Drake's up to a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, so it looks like they might just go all in on the Drake this turn. Which actually makes a lot of sense. Oh, cracks a research desk. Okay. 
takes a land, plays a land. Now they can crack a clue or a blood. I guess I could also place her ginger, crew the ship. Yeah, I think we lose. <laughs> I think we lose through the portal to Fraxia. Oh, well, they're an epic here too. Yeah, we get a, we need a top deck. We need a top deck. Come on deck. Here he's resolve. Oh, too much of a good thing. If we gotta lose, might as well lose to uh, a budget magic deck. <laughs> it does look like the mana base has been upgraded at least. Well, let's bring in things that can wrath the board or blow up artifacts. Oh, this deck is hard to sideboard with. I think the best sideboard plan that I have come up with is just like trim a little bit, like trim a couple cloak things, a couple blink things, the worst of the finishers for the matchup, and and hope that we're just like a slightly less consistent but more removal build, a uh, heavy build of what we were before. I don't think there's really another way to sideboard with this deck that I've found at least. And this hand, only two lands, but it's good, right? We have removal, we have cloaking, we have artifact removal. So as long as we just hit our lands, all right, opponent has an epic here. As long as we just hit our lands, we should be okay. All right, that's a Vanifar. We're gonna hold off a turn on this Gatekeeper. We don't really want to run out the Frill back. Like, assuming we draw land, we don't really want to run out the Frill back until we can kick it. We need blue mana for the Cloak. We really just, we need to hit a land here. We would like an untapped land, but we will take any land at this point. Oh God, clear Drake. Well, okay. It is definitely tapped, but it is a land. And now I guess we have to just run out this Gatekeep. We were hoping to hit untap land and play it face down for blink shenanigans, but so we need a blue source still. That is a downside of playing so many. <laughs> so we're four colors and we have a bunch of surveillance lands to try to manipulate the top of our deck, which leads to some slow land draws sometimes. Sometimes we just hit a lot of tap lands. Opponent nugs us for one down to 17 and mm, Mishra's research desk. Mm hmm. And touch the spirit realm. I guess we just touch a spirit realm. The only other option is Tranquil Frillbrack with no kicker, essentially. We would like to answer this gear drag, which is going to get big. All right, opponent's gonna counter it. Well, we got the counter out of their hand at least, so would have rather had our opponent not have a gear drag, but Spyglass Shiren. All right, and gonna crack the map. Um, the Epicure and grow the drake. I feel like Gleaming Gear Drake is actually really good. We'll have to see, we're getting a bunch more artifacts in the big score. There's some other artifact token cards. Like, I feel like this card's gonna be really good at some point. I mean, it was already really good in our budget deck, but I haven't seen other people playing it yet. I feel like Gleaming Gear Drake at some point though, will have a chance to be a tier standard card perhaps. Well, <laughs> even when our lands could come into play untapped. <laughs> oh, the fourth land, fast land is the worst. <laughs> If we had drawn our lands in like the opposite order, things would have been a little bit smoother, but don't kill us. Yeah, we might just be too slow here with these tap lands and missing lands. Bound at research desk for an island and plays it and fives us. I mean, we can frill back. We can frill back to go after the, the gleaming gear drake, which is pretty sweet and pay the one and blow up the gear drake <clears throat> would have been better with even more mana so we could gain some life but gear drake down play the archive <laughs> it's mocking us now there's an untapped land but do we even want to untap land now is it past the point of needing the untapped land i think we keep it we did get rid of the gear drake so we're not really facing down a meaningful amount of pressure on board all right search injure Spyglass Siren. I mean, we are still phasing down some pressure, like, found it cracks the map, grows the ginger. Oh, we could use a Wrath. Maybe we should have got rid of the land just to try to draw a Wrath, but we didn't know our opponent had Surge Ginger. I was thinking we had much more time, but the Surge Ginger sped up this clock a lot. A braid, so that can kill our Frill back. Yeah, sort of, sort of took a turd. Surge Ginger is a pretty good card. Down to eight. We know we're drawing a land. We probably just got to hide in plain sight. We could hit Gatekeeper plus Surprise. That would be the dream. There's our Wraths. 
Ooh, all right. Well, surprise, it's a bunch of ass and lands. We would have much rather drawn those removal spells. Opponent, cracking the blood, scrying, growing the ginger. Now we're in just like trying to stay alive mode, basically. But it is not looking great, especially with our point having this abrade to kill something. I don't think we die this turn, but <sighs> I don't even think this works. They can abrade the frill back and crack the blood. I guess we just gotta hope they don't do it. We also know we're not gonna be drawing that to populate. Yeah, there's the abrade. If you gotta lose, lose to a budget magic deck. <laughs> That's my, that's my motto. And well, this end actually looks pretty great. So we got hide in plain sight, double touch the spirit realm, portal to Phyrexia, not gonna be great until we find a Vanifar, but <clears throat> opponent leads on a swamp. Ooh, and here he's resolved too. Uh, definitely keeping the land. Oh, it's really gonna come down to this hide in plain sight. If this hide in plain sight is good, now let's mill the Nahiri's resolve. If this hide in plain sight is good, we might just like virtually win the game on turn five. If it's really good, we could double blink. <laughs> opponent planes. Well, desert a beach. I mean, let's do a little hiding. Don't worry about it, opponent. They're just two. Oh, all right. That is <laughs> second portal and then I guess a random land. Well, let's see if our opponent has removal and if they guess correctly. 50 50 shot opponent if we got to cut down. Oh, all right, we get to choose. I think we might sack the land. <laughs> Let's go with the land. We don't have any red mana for Nahiri's resolve yet, which is a little awkward. Opponent passes, lay the tap land, hit you for two. No need to surprise yet. At this point, portal's actually better as a two, -two as a two two face down creature somehow, as weird as that sounds. Once our opponent does something, I mean, if they try to kill it, then we gotta do it. Otherwise, we probably wait till they play a creature or like fire up their creature land or something. Okay, well, <clears throat> that is that is good enough. Phyrexian Obliterator, sure. Uh, well, surprise, opponent, surprise. <laughs> Touch the spirit realm. Oh no. Oh. Well, this is still okay, but it's not as good as it should have been. <laughs> uh, we didn't set a stop during our opponent's second main phase, so we get our portal back on our end step. We would have been able to get it back sooner and get the obliterator, but I mean, still good. It's still very good. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind. The return of Touch of Spirit Realm is end step. So if we want to get it back on our opponent's end step, we got to do it on their second main phase. Arch Priest of Shadows. Well, we will take a Phyrexian Obliterator. Also worth mentioning, if things go really wrong, we can always touch the Spirit Realm. It can blink artifacts. So we can touch the Spirit Realm to uh, save the portal if we need to. I mean, would you like to attack into your Phyrexian Obliterator? Uh, well, let's just kill the Archpriest. We do lose the Obliterator for now. Although, I mean, we have portal, so it's gonna be coming back. Obliterator down. <laughs> yeah, portal to Phyrexia on turn five is hard to beat. Uh, Obliterator, again? More lands. I mean, we're getting pretty close to <laughs> just casting a, a second portal, which double portal. How do you lose a double portal? I mean, the risk is farewell on the clock thinking. Ooh, okay. Reanimation fight. <laughs> virtue of persistence. Wait, isn't there only one other creature in the graveyard? We can't answer the virtue with touch, but we can just reanimate all the creatures. <laughs> we could cast the portal, but I don't think we should. I am still a little worried about Farewell. We'll just keep playing lands, leaving up our Trust of Spirit Realm. Virtue Persistence, not doing anything with the Empty Graveyard. I don't think I've ever beat Akaya before, but we might beat Akaya this time. It's possible. Opponent, Exiles the Obliterator. I mean, we have to kill the Kaya. Yeah, sure, we'll let that go. Opponent draws a land. So you probably have to get rid of the Obliterator. Sparrow's Headquarters. Yeah, let's just do it. Portal number two. Out of here. It's so hilarious that we have double portal and our opponent has this virtue, and neither one of us is getting much value out of it because there's just not enough creatures. <laughs> no one's drawing creatures. There's been two creatures. One's exiled now. Oh God, well, this is going to, uh, if it doesn't kill us, it is going to really ramp up the reanimation. <laughs> Breach the multi, oh no, they hit our Atali. I mean, maybe this isn't the worst, right? So they hit our Atali, but we do have Touch of the Spirit Realm. So we can blink the Atali and get it back. Double portal versus Virtue of Persistence, Breach the Multiverse. Haymaker into Haymaker, so opponent, Kaya. 
and Itali finds another Kaya and a gatekeeper. Can you play face? You should be able to play face down, right? Or no? I think you can play face down off Itali. I would have played it face down. They even have white mana. But opponent, okay, gonna face up it. The Kaya didn't do much because they just legend ruled. Cracks the map. I mean, for our opponent just casting a Breach the Vaultiverse, this could have went way worse. So what are we taking from the graveyard now? There's Shieldred, Obliterator still, <laughs> Chaplet of Alms in our graveyard. Weirfox Bodyguard can do some work. Wow, Weirfox Itali is kind of a loop. We can Weirfox the Itali sack it to get the Itali trigger and then do that every turn. I think we might still be okay. Opponent's down to just two lands in hand. Opponent going to exile and back it up, back it up. We do need to not get hit by these things. So from our opponent. So yeah, take the Weir Fox. That'll resolve first. So get rid of the Itali. Then our opponent has to sack the Gatekeeper or the Kaya, I guess, but they're gonna sack the Gatekeeper. I wish we had red mana. Well, there's red mana for the future. This Nahiri's Resolve is going to be pretty good. Everything reanimating with haste is going to be really good. We don't really want to get hit by this thing, because that's more reanimation. How do we lose? Our opponent drawing more Breach the Multiverses would be not good. Pass. <laughs> we can't flip the Shieldred. I learned that lesson. <laughs> if you flip your opponent's Shieldred, they get the backside. I did that once. Opponent. Going to try to go double reanimation. Yeah, I think we just have to flicker out the token. Wow, what a crazy game. <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy game. Pone scoured Barons and drains us. Yeah, I mean, if this hits us, they reanimate twice, right? We can't we can't have that. Well, Touch of the Spirit Realm. Touch of the Spirit Realm is oddly flexible. <laughs> Plank the token, kills tokens, sets up our surprises, saves stuff randomly. Can we win this turn? All right, sure, 2-1 Flying First Strike. With Nahiri's Resolve, all the stuff we get from Portal is going to have haste. So I think we just sack this Werefox, get back the Itali, get some triggers, see what we find. Spin it to win it, spin it to win it. Uh, all right, Cryptic Coach Yoldred. And we might actually be two Kayas, not just one Kayas, but two Kayas this game. We do a little cloaking, which is just a land. All right. Yeah, let's, we might as well cycle. We're not going to play this land anyway. Find us something good. Well, Atrox is actually not bad. Well, now we get to do some reanimating. Opponent's graveyard's getting empty. We will take another Werefox and, yeah, I guess an Obliterator. I mean, I think this should do it. Unless our opponent's last card is something really good. So we can get rid of the 4-4, four, four, pay the ward, play the Nahiri's Resolve to give everything haste. Ooh, and a get lost too? Oh yeah, that definitely does it. So Nahiri's herself, haste up the team. Yeah, I guess we'll just kill it. I don't even know if we actually need to kill it, but let's kill it to send a message. Oh, uh, and here comes the janky beats. Apparently two portals to Frexia beats a virtue of persistence. <laughs> Today we learned <laughs> opponent very dead. Well. Uh, the surprise, it actually worked. Wow, what a game. That was a very interesting game. It looked like we were going to run away with it, but in the end, it ended up being close. Well, let's bring in a little more removal. The negates I am worried about. Breach the Multiverse Kaya. Those are two cards that scare me. Bring in the Farewell, just as a catch-all. Bring in the negates. And then I guess we just go back to doing some trimming. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Bump, 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 bump. Um, we will... <laughs> Do a little more, a little more trimming. Run it like that. Mm, all right. I mean, hide and play in sight and here is resolve. Sounds like the kind of thing we want to do. And to touch the spirit realm. Well, let's do a little surveilling. Mm, yeah, I guess we keep it. It does seem good, right? They also have obliterators. They have the arch priest or whatever the the five drop is. Those are things worth answering. Opponent. Land go, land go, land go. That's actually good for us. I think one thing I've learned about this deck is aggro can be tricky. We can be a bit clunky and slow against aggro. We can beat it if we uh, run well, especially after sideboarding when we draw our sweepers, but not one of our best matchups. Your go, merger. About it, planes. Shieldred. Well, we wanted to hide in plain sight, but we might have to just kill the Shieldred. Uh, we could still, we can take a turn, right? 
Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's just get rid of the shieldred. I think that's fine. Shieldred down. Probably would have been better to play the surveillance land, actually. Opponent Virus Beetle. We don't have a way to get it back from the graveyard. Yeah, all right, let's just discard a land. Oh, about it, passing. Well, okay. Now I think we actually, <laughs> actually just get down the Nahiri's Resolve. We could play the Hide in Plain Sight and try to Nahiri's Resolve next turn. Instead, if we Nahiri's Resolve, now we can Hide in Plain Sight, hit a surprise, immediately flip it on our end step. As long as, well, okay, looks like your opponent's just attacking. As long as our opponent doesn't have a get loss, we should be okay. Opponent hits us for four. So we're down to 14, but we're about to start doing things. Come on, big hits, big hits. Hide in plain sight, oh goodness. Unyielding gatekeeper is okay. It is face down, we can flip it up as removal, so it's not bad. Those are not what we are looking for though, like at all. <laughs> we would have taken any of our surprises. That is, well, I guess the surprise is on us. <laughs> we hit nothing. So we can flip up. Mm, yeah, I guess that's fine. I kind of wanted to do that the other way. <laughs> I didn't pay close enough attention to our uh, <laughs> surprise creatures. Uh, it would have been better to attack with the, with the non-gatekeeper and leave back the gatekeeper. So let's flip this up to flip this up into a land. And this is gonna get us closer to casting portal. So flip it up, get a surveil land, surveil into Another hide in plain sight would be sweet. Vanifar also sweet. <laughs> we will accept a Vanifar. Well, not gonna be the fastest portal surprise, but you gotta give that damage opponent. All right, opponent fires up. Well, now the coast is clear for Vanifar. Opponent hits us down to 10, but there is bad news for our opponent. We're gonna play a Vanifar. <laughs> we are going to go to combat. We are gonna do a little cloaking of a very surprising portal to Phyrexia. And yeah, let's... Uh, Blink out both, I guess? Yeah, blink them both. So we get a portal into Vanifar, and we don't get hit by any sorcery speed removal on our Vanifar. And if they fire up their land, we can still kill it. Ooh, opponent has a virtue. Okay, well, we can also, get lost is really good. <laughs> we can also just kill that, which we probably will. Opponent's gonna hit us down to nine. The problem for our opponent is, we get to kill the virtue. Now, we get a Vanifar and a portal draw a cryptic coat i mean play the cryptic coat and surprise uh, secret ghost then we pick up the cryptic coat and now we can just cloak it and it's gonna have haste still get and hit ya and opponent needs something like this turn opponent's down to five opponent's down to five we can uh, do we even yeah we'll blink him out <laughs> Man, maybe we leave the land. Yeah, let's leave the land. I think we'd rather have a 3 2 than a land here. We will blink out the Cryptic Goat, though. Get more value. All right, opponent. Kill us if you can. Shielder's Edict. Well, there goes our land. I guess maybe we should have blinked it out. Oh, <laughs> uh, they could have done it in instant speed anyway. And fires up the fortress. I guess we just flicker it. Touch the spirit realm. Touch the spirit realm for the win. And yep, yeah, blink it comes back into play tapped and we just have lethal right from our stuff coming down with haste because of the nahiri's oh here comes nahiri's resolve portal to Vrexia. we will snag a gatekeeper get back the vanifar get back the cryptic coat cloak a wow in a hide in plain sight fired off and opponent scoops it up and that was a pretty good surprise win. That was a wild match. Wow. Standard is actually pre pretty good right now. I am liking this standard. And, uh, well, that's been a far surprise. When it works, it's pretty surprising. <laughs> So what do we learn this week about Vanifar Surprise in Standard? And overall, we went four and five with the deck, so just under a 50% win rate. The good news is, we did get to see a lot of surprises. This deck's kind of funny. Like, it has some consistency issues. We have some games where we draw a ton of our big surprises and we don't find a way to cloak them or we cloak a bunch of stuff, but we don't find a blink effect. So there is some inconsistency that's just kind of inherent with the plan of the deck. 
we also sometimes just get run over by aggro because our deck isn't like super fast or removal heavy in the early game. On the other hand, we also got to see the huge upside of this deck where we were just slamming like turn four portal to Phyrexia or turn five one with the multiverse. Just these ridiculously huge, hilarious turns. And the thing I love about this deck the most is we often end up with like a bunch of face down two twos. Some of them are pretty harmless. They're literally like lands that we happen to cloak or whatever, while other ones are like these huge game ending surprises and it puts our opponent in this weird position where they have to try to guess and like pick which face down creature actually matters uh, so they're playing this weird like roulette game where they got to try to make the right choice if they choose right we're probably gonna lose because they kill our portal to Fraxy and leave us with a face down land if they choose wrong we're probably gonna flip up that portal and just absolutely wreck them so it's just a really hilarious archetype and I love that it kind of solves my big issue with all these face down creatures is that they're just just not really that exciting because of the morph rule or whatever where they don't want you to flip up anything that's bigger than the you know face down creature is because it's annoying in combat or whatever we get a lot of just like kind of boring morphs these days sure they got abilities and stuff but Watsy just doesn't print any morph creatures or cloak creatures or whatever they're gonna flip up into these massive monsters it's like your 2-2 flips up into a 2-2 or whatever and this deck really solves that so I just love the way the deck plays I would definitely say more semi competitive than like super spiky competitive but you can definitely win a lot of games and it's just a really funny deck to play with so that's mana for a surprise that's better deck for today next week we'll be back with outlaws of thunder junction so until then have a great one everyone and i will talk to you soon looking for even more magic well make sure to check out last week's against the odds where we tried to exile every single non-land card from our opponent's deck to make it so they couldn't possibly kill us.